Hello, everyone, and welcome to Geopolitical Trends. My name is Di my name is David Wallalu. I forget even my own name. <laughs> anyway, I am so excited to be here. What do you guys think or make of French President Macron criticizing his counterpart part of Germany, Olaf Scholz, today? You know, is the, is the unity in Europe breaking down? In this video today, I am going to provide you a brief analysis about how divided Europe is, despite what the government's not wanting to disclose the truth, because they are lying to their people. And, uh, and not only in Europe, but also here in the United States. And what will it mean for the future of the global relations, especially when it comes down to Ukraine conflict? But before I proceed, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like and the notification button so you will be notified every time I upload a new video. And thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. So I appreciate you for that. So all right, let's let's dive in here. You know, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron has publicly criticized Germany. This in itself is a big blow to the unity of Europe. So despite what you hear, coming out of Washington or Brussels, that there is this strong uh, unity in Europe or transatlantic relations. It's a lie. It's, it's, it's not true. It is not true. Because here's the thing. This criticism reveals now the disagreement, I will use the term profound disagreement that exists within European uh, 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 countries. And, and the reason why Macron criticized uh, Germany uh, because he said that Germany's behavior in, in Europe's current energy crisis, because France accused now Germany of working for itself or isolating itself or looking after its own interest. Well, wouldn't you wanna do that if you are a head of a government? Wouldn't you wanna look for the interest of your own country? That's basically what I will do if I am a head of state, I'm gonna look for the welfare of my people first before anything else. And, and this happens, by the way, this criticism happens on the sideline of the meeting that took place today. By the time you watch this video, the meeting will have already happened uh, in, 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 in uh, Brussels. And Macron said, and I quote, let me get the quote here so I say, I, I quote him accurately. He said, and I quote, I think it's not good for Germany or Europe to isolate itself. End of quote. And he also added, and I quote here, we certainly, we certainly, we must maintain our unity. End of quote. Which you, know, you and I know that it's a lie. Most European countries do not agree on what's going on right now, especially vis-a-vis -vis the sanctions on Russia. Because they are seeing their economies are struggling and suffering. And now you have protests in the streets they're not going to want to side with what France is saying. Even France itself is running into serious problems at home. And I have my own contacts in France, and I'm finding out that they are not disclosing the information. So, so France to sort of uh, uh, make it less, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not, not problematic. They're saying that the French president is going to work with his counterpart, Olaf Scholz, to find this solution. That's usually a diplomatic niceties, no more, no less. But the truth is, uh, Germany right now is facing criticism uh, within the EU, the European Union, because it refused, listen to this, it refused to cap gas prices in Europe. Yeah, let that sink in. Didn't you hear about a month ago that the European Union is going to move with putting a cap, uh, uh, price cap on the Russian oil or gas? And I remember I did a video on, on our uh, other channel in, way, in which I said, ain't gonna happen. Those are just talks. It's bravado, no more, no less. It's for domestic consumption. Yeah. Which basically the European, as a matter of fact, I did find out and I looked into this topic and I found that some European members are not agreeing to this. So the call for an EU, a European Union a gas price cap, which Germany, and, and get this, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Hungary, and Denmark have opposed already. They've already opposed it. 
because they are seeing, uh, given the unfolding cost of living that is going high, uh, you look at just what happened in uh, Britain right now, and UK is not a member of the EU anymore, but you just realize that the uh, the prime minister resigned because she, it just people are upset. And this is where the collapse of the European Union is, is about to happen. So, so despite what you hear, I want you to keep the other perspective that the governments in Europe not disclosing the truth and the France and the German criticism or France criticism of Germany, it's an indication for the rift that exists within the economic bloc or the organization. So, because here's the thing, France is among the countries that support the such a ceiling or, or a price cap on, on the gas, especially for gas being used uh, in electricity because they are running into problems right now. And then you're sure, and I did a video last time about the protest that's going on in Paris and they're still going on, by the way, they're getting more violent, by the way, uh, that they are now calling for uh, France to get out of NATO altogether. You know, the, the majority of people are fed up with this because the cost of living is going beyond what they can afford. So they are not going to tolerate whatever the government is saying, let alone the government is lying to them. So, so the French president, Emmanuel Macron, is saying now, well, we're going to have to figure out uh, some sort of a joint plan uh, 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 with our European allies to figure out the debts and, and how we can solve this crisis. But all this is hypes. Which means what? The government will have to either borrow more money, print more money, and, and that's going to just ruin their economies. Because that is exactly uh, why the German chancellor rejected the move altogether. Why well, he reje rejected the move? Not because he wanted to. <laughs> he rejected the move because the, the protests and demonstrations inside Germany. Once again, we don't hear about that here in the West, at least here in the United States. So, and this is why. Uh, I want you guys to have another alternative. Of course, you reach your own conclusion. I will never, ever reach a conclusion for you because it's not right of me to do so. But I will provide you the facts to the best of my knowledge, best of my abilities, and I fact check the information before I'll come on the air and share that with you. So, so this is where this rift is, is all about. So mind you that Germany already has allocated about 200 billion euros Yes, 200 billion, not a million, 200 billion euros program. Uh, and the reason for it is to ease, so-called, to ease the burden caused by the rising gas and electricity prices. Because people in Germany, uh, and, and I have a family who lives in Germany, so I'm very aware of what's going on in Europe. Actually, my family is scattered in Europe. Uh, they, they, they just, the government's not disclosing the truth. You would expect most governments not to behave that way. But it would be nice if the governments can work on behalf of their people. That to me makes perfect sense. So because for us in the US, we have in a constitution that says government for the people by the people. And yet our government is not working for the American people. Look at just, if you happen to be an American watching this, look at just how much money we have sent to Ukraine that has nothing to do with our benefit. Promoting democracy and human rights and all that, come on. Let's stop that nonsense because that's what it is. And let's look at the facts and reality for how American families are struggling. Europeans are no different. It's because their government embarked on a policy that was failed, that, a policy that is failed or was failed from the get go. They knew that the sanctions are not going to bode well for the Europeans themselves. Why? Because they're getting gas from Russia cheap. And also the proximity is so close. So this is why uh, you will think of leaders like Olaf Scholz. Yeah, the guy has no clue, either has no clue or is being pressured to do whatever. So, and this is why I, I don't believe uh, that those leaders truly understand the, 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 what geopolitics is all about. So, and, and to me, that's, that's sad to see that the European people are paying the price. So, so here's the what is factual is that European leaders, as of today, they are remaining, are still remain divided on how to deal with these rising gas prices. No. Not all of them on the same sheet of music, as we said. 
you know, uh, you know, after most of the EU countries uh, decided to call for a cap, not all of them agreed to that. As I said, Denmark, Holland, the Netherlands, Hungary, uh, Austria, even Germany itself say no, because they know what the consequences will be. They know the social breakdown that's going to lead to. So, and France is experiencing that. Sooner or later, you're going to see some major changes coming to uh, uh, France. So here's the thing. Soon, in few day, next days, next few days, Olaf Scholz. By the time you see this video again, this probably the trip will have taken place. Uh, Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, is planning a visit to Paris to meet with his counterpart Emmanuel Macron. You know, uh, both capitals, Berlin and Paris, have announced usually uh, uh, that the date of the German France uh, or French rather the date of the German and French ministerial meeting has been postponed till next year, January 2023. After it was scheduled to be held in the uh, sort of uh, next week. Now it's been pushed. So the German government said yesterday, the reason for the postponement was the existence of parallel dates for some ministers. That's basically a lie. The Germans don't want to meet with them anymore because they are looking after their own interests. And this is how usually they operate. But here is what's interesting. Very, very interesting. What's interesting is that the German chancellor is planning a trip next week to China. Makes you wonder. China was selling gas to Europe. But the trip is not about that. The trip is because the German business community has forced Olaf Scholz to go to Germany, to China, because the German companies depend greatly on the Chinese market. So his trip to China, Olaf Scholz, that is, which is going to be on November 3rd and 4th, and I will provide you insights about that trip. As I said, because the Germans uh, companies are saying decoupling from China is nonsense. It's non-starter. It's not an option. That's basically what it is. Because the crisis in, in Germany is getting very, very bad. So you will be looking at some companies shutting down by the end of the year. So that's why I say the trading between Europe or Germany and, and China will continue. So, so here is my question for you for today. You know, After the UK PM uh, 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 Liz Strauss resigned today, which of the European leaders do you believe would be next? Let me repeat this. After the resignation of Liz Truss of the UK, which of the European leader will be forced to resign next? You know, make sure to leave me some comments and I will respond to your, your, your feedback. You know. As always, remember, geopolitics impacts your daily life in more ways than one. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.